Hello there, White Pine families. My name is Devin Tyler, and I am the STEM Academy principal. We put together this presentation to help give you an understanding of Summit and to give a little bit more information about what Summit is. Before we go into the details, I wanted to first start with the why. Why would we make this change or why would we shift what we're doing? First off, Summit Learning is driven by teachers and it's created by teachers. And so they have a very good understanding of what it is that students need and in a curriculum that can be hard to find. The other part of Summit is that the relationships between teachers and students is so vital. It is the heart of Summit. And that connection is very important for the success of students. We know that when students have a connection or have a relationship with a trusted adult, they're not only happier, but more successful at school. We also like Summit because it provides a lot of professional development for our teachers. It's an essential part of the Summit Learning Platform, and our teachers went over some training this summer already and will continue to get more training through them. We understand that technology is here to stay. It is going to be a part of our lives, so why not find a program that is going to help us embrace that and use it as a tool and teach kids how to use it as a tool? Summit Learning is going to be great because it helps us with that family engagement piece. You're going to be able to log in and see real-time assignments, projects, and performance of your child. You're going to be able to have access to what they're learning, and you don't have to wonder what's happening at school. I had a son that decided to do the, the Summit Learning Platform when he was at Rocky Mountain, and he loved it and was very successful. It was great because as a parent, I could log in and I could see exactly where he was because he had this bar of progression. And we're able to see anything that was read means that it was past due and he needed to work on it. So we could talk about that. Anything that was yellow means that it was coming due and is something that we needed to discuss of what can we do to make sure we hit that done on time. And then if it was green, everything was good to go. And I could see really quick, really easily what my child was doing and where they were at and maybe what some of those areas that they were struggling with. So we hope that you enjoy Summit as much as we do. My name is Jeff Stubbs. I am the lead teacher here at White Pine. I also teach 8th, 9th, and 10th grade English. Um, I have some experience with Summit Learning. I was part of a team that introduced it at Taylor View Middle School. And Summit Learning is a program that I really, really believe in. At the, the start of the year, I was like, I can't do this. Like, there's no way I could do this. And then as time went on, she was able to kind of open up and ask questions. Summit Personalized Learning was all about kids. It's about their choice. It's about helping them take ownership of their own learning. So what I want you to do... Content's important, but it's more about getting the kids to understand who they are and how they learn. Our kids can articulate to you now what kind of learner they are. Am I um, kinesthetic? How do I learn best? And taking notes. Am I an auditory learner? They can all tell you. They couldn't in the beginning of the year. And I think that's one of the biggest things that kids learned along the way is how do I learn? So it's changed. I felt like I've learned more now. So if I ever struggled with something before, it was like, you struggled, you struggled. That's the end of it. Teacher's done teaching it. That's it. Now it's like, if I'm struggling with something, I get to keep learning it and learning it. And I actually, like, learn it. Just to see that process change, to see the kids learn where the resources are, learn how to go outside the resources and find things themselves, they've changed a lot. So in this presentation, we're going to talk about how Summit really melds just so well with our mission and vision statement. So our vision of a course is to create a dynamic and challenging educational institution with high academic standards, providing all students opportunities to develop into motivated learners, analytical thinkers, and competent leaders, to effectively utilize research-based practices and provide a progressive learning environment which maximizes individual student achievement to practice a positive and compassionate teaching environment in which educators communicate, share, and grow in a professional learning community, focusing on unlimited potential for all students and educators. And Summit's really going to let us do that. So let's, let's take a look. Um, some of our goals for this year are to teach students to apply new school skills rather than allowing some to simply get by on memorized facts. We're looking for mastery. We're really taking that jump into being a totally mastery-based school. Um, we want to ensure that students know what is needed to succeed and what it means to succeed in school. So it, it's not just getting an A, it's mastering content. It's 
gaining those skills they're going to need to be college and career ready. Um, we want to empower students to direct some of their learning. We want them to take ownership of it and to feel as if this is something they have control of to some extent. And we want to foster meaningful relationship between students and educators to allow for more productive interaction in a dynamic learning environment. And that's something that we've always um, strived to do at White Pine, and we're just continuing to maximize on those outcomes. So, of course, our approach to teaching is going to look at student engagement, meaningful learning, and strong relationships. And I'm now going to drill down a little bit more into those um, three outcomes. So student engagement, we're focused on empowering um, children to learn in the way that is best for them. And not only to learn in that way, but to be able to identify what is that way that, is, that I learned best. Um, we want them, again, to have a strong sense of ownership over that learning process, um, meaningful learning. We're lecturing less and we're listening more. We, are, we want students to be having those multiple opportunities to respond to, we want them coming at things with inquisitive minds. Um, we are making sure that children grasp concepts and skills before they move on. Finally, strong relationships our teachers are connected with and support each one of their students. And the research is behind us on this. It shows that students with a teacher that understands them are really more likely to succeed. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what's happening in our classrooms. Um, one of the big things, and I think, can I move this guy? Look at that, I can move him right there. I can move him all around. Um, but one of the big things that's happening is projects. Um, and when we say projects, we're talking about 80% of our curriculum, really. One of the things that first drew me to Summit was actually the way the projects were taught. I really loved the fact that students got to work with something longer. They got to think about it a little bit more in depth and work on understanding the content knowledge and those skills that we're teaching them a little bit more. Today we did like the roller coaster project. I like roller coasters because like the excitement of like waiting for the big drop and then coming down and going really fast. I love roller coasters honestly. Like that was one of the things when I first found out about this project. I was like, oh that sounds really cool. I think the students would really like it too. Summit, they give you the framework, they give you the outline. They want you to focus on the cognitive skills, which I think is a great thing, to focus on those skills that are lifelong and that they'll need for forever. I really wanted them to learn how to work in a group effectively, because that's an important part of being an adult. And then I also wanted them to get the engineering process. There's different spots set up around the classroom. I'll tell you where to go. With the project, students were like split into groups. They all got different roles that they picked and said, this is how we're going to hold each other accountable. And then we started to get work on, all right, we're going to design a roller coaster for a theme park. Raking a roller coaster by myself would be pretty hard. I like my group because all of us participated and helped. I like working in a group a lot better. It's kind of helped me because instead of like one brain, it's like a lot of brains helping each other. It's more of independent with like people around you instead of the teacher just telling you exactly what to do. And then we built it ourselves just to see like how much energy it needs to go someplace or how much less energy it needs to stop. They brainstormed, they went through ideas, they did simulations, then they actually built the foam roller coasters and then they tested them out, see if they worked, see if they were safe. So I started on like a little hill and it was like this and it went down like this and it like looped right there and it kind of like curved, curved and did like a twist. I really wanted them to work together and see that if you work together it actually makes it a lot easier. Because Summit is based on the skills, those skills show up in English and social studies and math. The cognitive skills I think will set them up for way more success in the future. It's important to have fun in all of your classes because like, when you're having fun, you're more engaged just naturally. I really like building like that, like engineering things, designing things and making it all not good. That was like kind of the best part.
Um, this is going to be where students are really applying the knowledge that they're gaining in some of their work in interesting ways. Um, this is where students in the summit program are going to be really utilizing um, something called the cognitive skills rubric. And that's a list of 36 different skills that are very much tied to the standards that we're already teaching. Um, for instance, I'm an, I'm an English teacher, so one of the cognitive skills that I look at a lot is using evidence. Um, and so students use evidence in many different classes. And the cool thing about the summit rubric is a lot of rubrics are one, two, three, four. One, you're not very good at it, or you're not good at it at all. Two, you're not very good at it. Three, you're pretty good at it. You're okay. You're good enough. And then four, you're great at it. Now, so one, one could be, there's a wide range of people who are very good at it. It could be somebody's below grade level just a little bit and they could still get a one and somebody's really, really below grade level. And that's a little concerning because it's hard for us to gauge. Now we go up to the four. And so if you're in seventh grade and you get a four, like, well, guess I'm done. Guess I don't need to do anything. And now Summit's going to throw that on its head. And we're going to look at, okay, what if, the one was actually a 2.5. What if we looked at an eight point rubric and we're just looking at this little snapshot? So one's actually 2.5. So maybe there's somebody who's really close to being within that seventh grade band. So we'll be able to help them. Now, what if there's somebody on the other end? So you get a seventh grade goes 2.5 to 4.5. That's really the range you're looking at. So now that person who got a four before, they get a 4.5, let's say. And it's like, well, it goes actually to eight. So you've got all the, you've got, there's sky's the limit. You've got farther to go. So in eight is not like, that's like where we want them to be in their college or career. So that's, that's after high school. So we're really pushing them to be really prepared. Um, so that's 80% of their work. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that other 20% of that looks like a little bit later. In this video, you're going to see a teacher's role with facilitating a workshop during the self-directed learning time. This teacher is helping these students with specific skill sets to help them be successful. So thanks for joining me. Um, I noticed all of you have yet to pass DNA to protein. So I wanted to do a quick workshop with you guys to um, see how you're taking notes on this one so that when you go to take this content assessment, you pass it the first time. Um, so can one of you talk me through when you see a playlist for the first time, um, what is your strategy? Like, what do you typically do? Um, first, I take the diagnostic just to see how I would do on it, like, just to test me. And then I go through the um, examples of how to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, it's on the focus area info, it gives you key terms that you want to learn, mm -hmm. and um, you either search them up or it tells you on the platform, mm -hmm. so you definitely want to know that. Okay, cool. How about you, Genesis? I take the diagnostic and it might do good, um, and I see like I don't have reds on like, you know how they label them for you? Mm -hmm. Then I just go and take the content, if I pass in great, if I don't, then I revise what I need help on. Awesome. Um, so I'm going to ask that you maybe do something a little bit different this time and see how it works for you, okay? So the first thing that I'm going to ask that you do is in the top right, you see where it says overview? And it says by the time you finish, finish this playlist, you should be able to, and then it gives you four things you should be able to do. Everyone see that? Um, so what I'm going to ask is that, see where it says objective one, describe the structure and function of RNA? Everyone see that on objective one? Oh, yeah. Um, so what I'm going to ask is that we actually take that objective and turn it into a question, OK? And we're going to write that question on the left-hand side of our page. So instead of describe the structure and function of RNA, I'm going to say, what is the structure and function of RNA? And then what I'm going to ask is that 
as we go through these resources, especially in objective one, we're looking for material or we're looking for things that will help us answer this question. Okay. So I actually know that guy. His name is Nick and he's, he was my success mentor for my team when I was over at Taylor view. I think one of the really interesting things is I wouldn't, I wouldn't hold it against you if you thought he was a science teacher because he's talking about DNA and proteins and a lot of real sciencey words. He's actually a social studies teacher and those were his mentor students. Now it's really important. And if you, if you look closely, he wasn't actually teaching science content. It was more, he was teaching kids how to access science content. And that's a big deal with summit is that in SDL, we are very much teaching our students skills, but they're not, they're not necessarily content specific skills. They're study skills. There's, how do we take notes? And he's really going into that. Okay. I want you to write a question here. Things that kids don't necessarily automatically think of. And I know as a teacher myself, you kind of go in early on thinking, okay, well just take some notes on this. And it's really just kids writing stuff down and that's not what notes are. And so we really want to make sure we're directly teaching that skill of writing notes so that kids are well prepared to do that in their classroom and have it really mean something. So students in SDL really learn how to take ownership of their learning and um, work towards their own success. In the traditional classroom, it's just the way that it's set up. It was impossible for me to reach every child, impossible. With Summit, every child is mentored weekly and they get to speak with their teacher and they have time with their teacher and they are met where they're at, which allows them to have that authentic dialogue. So we're working on math and your yeah. projects are all done? Oh yeah, all my projects are done. All right. And what's the... Because I didn't have a mentor last year. It was, it was harder. It was like I couldn't do work, like I couldn't focus. But now that I have my mentor this year, it helps a lot. It's like... If I ever have something on my mind and I can't do my work, I just go to her and just let it out and she's there. They're not used to having a connection with their teachers in this way. Somebody to say, what is your goal today? What are you going to work on? What is your focus? What's our focus for today? My focus for today is to finish math, math. and then hopefully... To have that thought partner in their curriculum, they're not used to that. I wasn't used to that. But we are treating a child, or like the whole kid now. University of St. Thomas in Duke, okay. By mid-October, I was looking around saying, Man, I know these kids so well this year. If this mentoring piece weren't part of it, I don't know that it would be as successful for me as well as the kids. And I think what also is really important about Summit is that this mentor-student relationship Summit helps to make sure that it's structured. Um, if you look at this thing that the mentor has that helps prompt them, the those conversations are, yes, about connecting, but it's also about making sure that we're really diving into what that student really needs. Our amazing teachers will be engaged with students in deep and meaningful ways, both academically and to help develop lifelong habits for success. Our students and teachers will use computers to support their work together this year. This computer is a tool. It is a useful tool for both students and teachers, but it absolutely does not replace the critically important relationship between teachers and students. This relationship is supported through the information that our teachers can access about your child's learning through our classroom technology. Students can also use their computers to access new learning resources, submit assignments, set goals, and track their progress towards these goals. This program was designed by teachers, and one thing we like in particular is that it's extremely responsive to feedback from our teachers. The program has also received the highest rating from the Common Sense Privacy Program, so we feel safe using it with your children. It's important that you are regularly checking in with your student as well as logging into your Summit account to see their progress. With Summit, you're going to be able to have conversations that have more meaning than asking a child, what did you do today? 
I did nothing or I read something, you're going to be able to have conversations like, what cognitive skills are you working on? What have you learned from a focus area? What are some of your learning goals this week? Anything lower than a C- minus is considered to be off track. And an off track means that a student is not meeting a goal. They're not quite there with a the cognitive skill or the end of unit assessment grade level is not where we want them to be. So we do not offer Ds and Fs in this program. We just look at that C- minus, and anything below that, we are working towards helping them if they're off track. So if they happen to have that off track C minus by the time the end of the semester happens, then they will be getting an incomplete. So with that mastery, they're going to be able to continue to work on things over and over until they master it, until they need that level of support. If they have it and they understand it, they're going to be able to move on. So just paying attention and looking at those grades is going to help you understand how you can support your student. It's important as parents that you stay connected and stay engaged. So once your students have created their account in Summit, the mentor teachers will be sending out your username, which will be the email we have on file, and a basic password that needs to be changed once you are logged in. So you're going to go to the summitlearning.org website, and that's where you're going to be able to log in as a parent. The software program does give you access to receive text messages and updates. So here's a sample of what those text messages can look like. This is just a small snapshot of what it looks like. And it's really important um, to get that because sometimes you forget to go and log in and see what they're doing. But with this text snapshot, you can kind of get an idea of where they are. Now we know right now you don't know what you don't know because we're so new at this. We don't know what to expect or what questions to ask or how you can get extra help. So we are planning another parent night towards the end of September because then we'll have enough time for students who have worked with it, parents to work with it, and then we can answer more questions and give out more information just to see if there's anything else that we need to clear up. So we are going to meet again towards the end of September. So stay tuned and we'll be getting those dates out soon. There are some common questions that parents ask us. So what if I am still confused? What if I don't understand what I'm doing or how to help support my child? I really encourage you to reach out to their homeroom teacher. Their homeroom teacher is going to be that mentor, and they're, they're going to be the ones that are going to be building that relationship and having the most communication and contact with you and your child. So make sure that you are asking them for questions. But you're also welcome to email myself, Devin Tyler, T-Y-L-E-R-D-E, at WPCSCougars.org, or call the school, 208-715-9772, to get more direct instruction or in information that you're missing. Now, sometimes parents are worried about what it is that their child is supposed to be doing at home. So what does homework look like? If students are on track and doing everything that they're supposed to be, they don't have to come home and work on things. Really what it can do is if they want to accelerate through something, then they can do more and continue working. Or if they're off track, then it would be a good time to work on things. So if you're looking in their summit and you see that they have anything marked red, then they're behind and they haven't gotten something complete that was due. And that would be a great conversation to talk about. What can we do? Well, the homework that you would have would be trying to complete that red. But because they have a mentor, they're also going to be talking with that mentor and setting those goals. So they'll be able to have the opportunity to know exactly what they're supposed to be working on. I thought that I would include in this presentation some just overall general information. You should have received the schedules for your child in an email, and you can also log in on PowerSchool so that you can see what their schedule looks like. Um, just as a reminder, we are still looking and able to offer the option B where you can be full online. So we have sent out texts and emails so you can look for that for more details. If you have any questions, concerns, or further inquiries or anything that you're concerned with in general, then you're welcome to set up a meeting with Dr. Lee in our tech center. She is really great at accommodating those schedules and making phone calls or doing Zoom or doing in-person. And so if you're wanting to do online, I encourage you to set up a meeting. But in general, you're you're feeling a little uneasy or nervous or needing some extra help, please make an appointment with her so that she can help clear up any of those things. Just as a reminder, school does start September 8th and our hours are from 8.15 to 3.35. We do not have early release this year as our Mondays are all going to be virtual. Drop off is out front and no sooner than 8 a.m. if possible. If you need to have your child here sooner than that, then you need to make arrangements with me so that we can figure that out and it will be on a case-by-case -case basis figuring out how we can help the families because we don't want that to be a hardship. We'll make sure that as students come into campus that they'll be asked to go into the cabin and that's where they're going to get their take 
take their temperatures, and then they're going to be able to have those temperatures again once we have um, lunchtime. So we'll move the camera so that they can get it a second time. After they have their temperatures taken in the morning, then they're going to be able to go to their homeroom class, and that's where they'll be spending that, any of that extra time. Of course, if they need to eat breakfast, then they can go in the cabin, get their temperature taken, and then go eat breakfast. Um, we are going to be looking at um, putting out surveys for the students when they first come back of what after school clubs they're really interested in. This is just to get their interest to find out what clubs we want to offer because if we don't have enough students interested, then we're not going to be able to offer that club. So we're just going to have the students kind of fill out a little interest based survey to find out what our numbers are and then we'll be putting out more information. So look for the clubs and information to come soon. Thank you for your support and for being willing to watch this presentation. We are here to help, so please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any further questions or having any needs or anything that you need us to take care of. We look forward to seeing you next week.